Joining me now is someone who knows Mike Pence well. It's Olivia Troy. She previously served as Pence's Homeland Security Advisor and and Counter-Terror Advisor when he was Vice President. Olivia, thank you so much. There's a lot of speculation about Pence considering a presidential run. Do you think that's something he's still mulling over in his head, or has he made up his mind, and how is that going to factor into how he replies to this subpoena? Yeah, look, I I think he's definitely still moving forward with that. I think you've seen him traveling around the country. You've seen him, I mean, I think he's going to Iowa. He's certainly out there publicizing his book, obviously, but I do think that he has an intention to run. And with the subpoena, I think it gives him political talk talk cover. This is sort of the security blanket that I think Mike Pence has been looking for in terms of coming forward and actually talking about what really happened in a very honest and truthful way behind closed doors. And then publicly, he can say, well, look, look, I was compelled legally. I didn't willingly do this. Right. And he has some political top cover there for the base of the Republican Party. Although I, I feel like that base is gone. But I think in his calculation, maybe he thinks that he can still win them back. Now, you, you mentioned that this might be the cover he needs. But, you know, back in November, he, was, he spoke to CBS News about why he did not cooperate with the January 6th committee. And let's listen to hear what he had to say. And I'll ask you a question on the back end. Congress has no right to my testimony. We have a separation of powers under the Constitution of the United States, um, and I believe it would establish a terrible precedent uh, for the Congress to summon a vice president of the United States to speak about deliberations that took place uh, at the White House. So you're uh, you're closing the door on that entirely? um, I'm closing the door on that. uh, But I must say again that the partisan nature of the January 6th committee uh, has been a disappointment to me. All right. So do you do you want to put down a marker? Will he cooperate with the special counsel's request for his testimony when he made a very deliberate decision not to participate in the congressional committee's request for his testimony? I think he's more likely to cooperate with DOJ uh, because I think in in his head and his perspective, he thought that the January 6th committee was too political. And I think that was the excuse that he used. Now, granted, I personally believe completely differently. I think he should have been forthcoming. I think he should want to willingly tell the American people the truth about just how bad the situation was. But I think, uh, look, in some ways, it's a political advantage. If DOJ, you know, takes Donald Trump out of the running, that works in Mike Pence's favor. So, and I'm sure that is part of the calculus going through the Pence team right now. It's not like they are not thinking about that strategic bigger picture in the long run. And what do you think is going in, the, going through the minds of the Trump people at this point? I mean, they may very well try to intervene and say, no, 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 no. You cannot compel Mike Pence to testify. This is pr- protected executive privilege. Uh, al- alternatively, on a just strictly political matter, they just might whack him for even considering the idea of working with the special prosecutor on this. Yeah, I think I, I can certainly see that. Uh, <laughs> look, and I, Mike Pence has hired a, 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 an executive privilege hawk as one of his attorneys, right? And so I actually do think that that will be asserted at some point, whether it's from the Trump team. And I think Pence will likely comply and go along with that because he's also touted executive privilege in the past. And he's been very, uh, very strong on that, saying that there is, you know, the protection of the Oval Office and he really believes in it in terms of the presidency. And so I could see a scenario where they will try to slow walk this again. I mean, let's be honest, Pence has been stalling to tell the truth and to really talk about this for over two years now, right? That's how long this has been. And if they can continue to stall this process, I believe that they all will go in on this and they will. Well, let me ask you just one last sort of macro question here, which is January 6th as an issue. We are now over two years away from it. Um, It still lingers, obviously, for a lot of us. Um, But the Republican electorate seems to have moved on or shown that they don't actually care all that much about what happened on that day. Do you view uh, this investigation uh, and sort of the larger debate around the insurrection as materially important in the context of a Republican primary? I think it's critical. I think there needs to be accountability for what happened that day. I don't see how we can sit here and take ourselves seriously as a country without accountability for what happened. That was a very dark day in our country's history. It should never happen again. And while the Republican Party wants to whitewash this, and you know, while they continue, by the way, they could still continue to spread, 
have spread election denialism. And I think that'll, you know, election integrity, and I put that in quotes, is now part of the RNC's official platform that they plan to pursue. I think that is exactly why we need to hold accountability, because we can't have domestic terrorists running amok attempting to do this again. And they're still out there. All right. Olivia Troy, thank you so much. Former advisor to Vice President Mike Pence.